Okay, we're back live in, uh, I'm not going to say New York City, I was about to say New York City, but it San Francisco. Like New York, it was like, I was just talking about it's the East Coast. Chilly today. We're just talking about the East Coast, but uh, I'm John Furrier in San Francisco for the the drill down of the EMC VSpec launch. I'm with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Cynthia Gallant, who is with Citrix. She's the relatively new to Citrix, new to Citrix, uh, VP of Channel Strategy and, and Development. Welcome. Thank you. Good to have you here. So, Thank you. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, desktop virtualization, VDI, um, end user computing. I, we, you know, we never really know what to call it. We don't like the term desktop I virtualization. I fully you know? agree, yeah. Well, now why, why what's well, your- Well, I, I think it's really that? the trends that are driving it that are more important than the name that we call it. I think calling it desktop virtualization has a real techie sound to it, right? But it's really all about the end user and their experience. And one of the, the key things that we're triggering off of is that mobility. Workers want the ability to work any place in any time, right? And they have to access their desktop and their applications and their data, and they want to do that from any choice of devices. And that trend, I don't think there's anyone that would argue that that trend has just gone crazy. It's, again, it makes always one of the top CIO careabouts in all the surveys that happen. So it's one of the first um, major applications to move to a private cloud for that reason. Essentially managing it in that environment, it just makes so much more sense with all the rate of change that's happening. Cynthia, so I mean, obviously the channel discussion here is all about the services angle, and mm -hmm. we have a site, servicesangle.com, which we are the reference point for the disruptive change in services. Really, no one's covering it like we are, and we talk about VDI and desktop virtualization, virtualization, all this stuff, but it, there's a disruptive enabler here, and that is the cloud mobile social mm -hmm. environment that we're living in. You Correct. mentioned mobile, the proliferation of app. I mean, a kid can start a company two years ago and sell for a billion dollars. I mean, <laughs> instant, anything could happen really fast with virality, social, and the cloud. So, in the old days of IT, vendors made a lot of money selling desktops at huge margins. The channel partners would roll them out. I remember the days burning the disk and gold master CDs and now, but that's all changing, obviously, with the cost of ownership conversation. So we're back to gen two of the desktop. What's mm -hmm. your view on this, this transformation? Because desktops aren't going away. Nope. Okay, the PC is dead in the sense of it being the old boat anchor, you know, bloated software, we've, as we were talking about a synergy was this bloated desktop and the thin client is in, but that's really about virtualization where you have the apps that you want yep. on a device of preference, whether it's in your office or on the road. Talk about the transformation and how that relates to the channel partners. Right. Because at the end, they know this game. People need PCs, they need mobile phones, they need yep. devices, at the end of the day, to run their business apps, et cetera. So what's your view right. on this transformation? Well, it, part of the transformation is tied to the transformation that we talked about in the session for VSpecs on the journey to private cloud. And IT organizations, the best term I heard in the industry, was they're moving to become cloud service brokers. They no longer want to be the ones that are building and integrating. So that, to me, is a perfect opportunity for channel to really move into that direction. To real, instead of having IT organizations integrate the piece parts, the, the, the model that we showed in an evolution where they were picking their own pieces and putting it together, they want to get out of that business. They, and what cloud does more than anything else is speed the time to service delivery, the requirements for that. People expect now twice as fast that a Can new you service. Example? Can you example on that? So a new application coming online in a business, people no longer would accept the timelines that would have been probably proposed in days past. And so as a result, having these integrated infrastructure uh, solutions that are validated, pre-validated, and then the channel partner who can really advise and play that advisory role to the customer, that frees them. Because there you have to be a broker of many types of and services. And they can sell their own services. Consultative Absol services, big services opportunity. services. Correct. And I think that's what you'll see is more of a shift to the channel partner of a lot of the traditional IT services that were uh, done in-house, and their role will change to be more of a broker where they bring in public cloud offers, private cloud So this offers. gives the opportunity for the, the partner, the reseller or integrator to actually get more embedded in the client. Similar to how the desktop enabled them to run the help desk for the big customer or get more involved in the internal operations. What examples would you say is out there for a partner to be more embedded with their client and deliver some value? Can yep. you give examples? Well, if you look at the um, healthcare industry and the electronic health records, um, that area has moved very rapidly to desktop virtualization. And 
the com com bringing together the pieces from the major ISVs, the Cerners and the Meditech and the Epics, and, and then bringing all those pieces together in the infrastructure. As talking to some of the VARs here, their role now is advising the client on how to get faster adoption of EHR, electronic health records, and masking the complexity of the infrastructure and the components and the software that have to come together. Could so you, it's a perfect opportunity for their services, which drives more margins. So, so share with our audience out there, because this, this is more something that I've been really thinking about, because I remember the days when it was a reseller channel of hardware, and then some services, and then you know, break fix was the key service, and it evolved into much more consultative, the delivery of services that were strategic and, and critical. What is, and then you think about the polarization, the VAR and the reseller and the distributor. What, is there a similar construction of the, of the landscape out there in terms of what you call them? I mean, is it, what's an integrator? What's a reseller? I mean, you're not really, you're reselling, but I, it's, it's indirect. I sir, totally it's agree. indirect sales. So how would you categorize the current channel for cloud mobile social? I think there's an opportunity, and um, I don't know if I'm stealing someone's terminology, but the, the term I use, I haven't really seen it in printing, is solution provider. And you, you actually will hear some of the more advanced, progressive uh, resellers who have adopted this model. And that is the model that you talked about, where they're acting more as advisors around the business opportunity and masking the complexity behind it and bringing the pieces together. That is, is uh, and when you call, if someone be a s solution provider, they could be a stand a hardware reseller, they, they could be an SI, you know, they could be an ISV. So I think this term that I'm finding when the channel is really around solution providers, because again, IT, it doesn't want to build anymore. They want to get into selecting the components and being that cloud service broker. Some public, some private, pull it all together. And, and I would think, whatever you call it, desktop virtualization or end user computing, um, is a great opportunity for that because there's a lot of confusion around it, right? I mean, people think, oh, well, I virtualized my server, so I guess I'll just use the same technology to virtualize my desktop. And it's completely different workloads. I mean, you think about what we do on a desktop versus what we do on a server, you know, there's a lot of different I.O. patterns, I.O. activity, it's gonna, you're gonna have to size it differently. Um, two questions, is that, you see in that, and, and specifically, how are, is the channel taking advantage of that confusion? Right, um, absolutely seeing that. It's, it's, it's very, very different than server virtualization for the workloads that you mentioned. In addition, the user profiling is very, very important because there's some users who can operate with more of a standardized environment that's more controlled and has a limited set of application access. And then there's others that need a more, a more richer environment uh, that might include more uh, video and, and voice in that environment. That's very different to size and it's important to profile the users as they put together the solutions for the whole desktop transformation. And you know, Citrix is in the unique um, position to be able to deliver an offer for all types of users. We call that a flex cast capability um, because it really depends on what the user is going to do and how they will access and what you want them to access for security and other reasons. And that profiling is important and that's a great channel partner uh, activity. So, Cynthia, you talked about virtually everybody's, you know, looking at desktop virtualization or end user computing. With the, now with mobile, it's it's coming in. At the same time, it's it's largely been confined to various niches. They might be industry specific. They might be application specific. Maybe, you know, help desk or claims desk or you know, government where you need a lot of security. Um, again, two questions: are you, are you do you agree with that? Are you seeing that? And and is that changing? And how is that changing? There were definitely early adopter verticals where, it, and there were triggers that happened. So I use the electronic health records was a trigger and the money that was available even through a lot of the government stimulus packages to go make that happen. So that was a big group. The financial services for a very different reason, um, their, their users are super users. They have, you know, used to multiple workstations with video, rich video experiences, et cetera. So um, we're seeing those early use cases, but now now with both the decreased complexity of the solution, the decreased cost of the solution, where it's rolling out now to SMB. Um, organizations and you know, having worked in, in SMB companies at one point in my life too, they don't want to be in the business of managing desktops. They want to be in the business for what they make money for. 
So if this now technology has gotten to the point and it's mature enough now that SMB solutions are out there and it's perfect for the channel to go in and again implement even in and the SMB, SMB and minute. SMB needs turnkey. They need Absolutely. They can't and have that's channel. That's perfect for the channel. channel. Is the is the end user experience now with desktop virtualization comparable to what I can have on my on my desktop? Yes. There's still a big gap. No, yeah. it is there. You can make that promise to me as a user. You're not going to take away my functionality, yes, my speed, you my have, performance, correct. my richness of graphics. Correct. That wow. the the uh, technology has advanced to that, and what Citrix has done around optimization and a lot of the the end to end and improving the network piece of it that has to deliver that. There are a lot of components that come into it, and again, why it's a great channel opportunity because you do have to consider whoever said it of the two of you. It's I/O, and I/O is end to end throughput. Mm -hmm. Think about how many things touch I/O. So that's an important uh, opportunity for the channel to really go in. And Cynthia, you've been an entrepreneur in your bio, you've raised money from venture capitalists, you run your own business, been a founder. So you know, being an entrepreneur and now in, in the big company, got a good view of the world. What would you say to folks out there who are kind of second guessing the channel opportunity, saying, hey, we're in a rut, we're, in a, you know, we're down, the market's changing, I see there seems to be some hype companies getting sold for a billion dollars, Instagram, people are criticizing that, but Microsoft, and we're in a bubble, all this conversation is going on. But if you were an entrepreneur right now and you, want, you wanted to get into the, the, the solution provider business, what would you focus on and what areas would you, do you see as an entrepreneur that are like, wow, that's a, that's a nice valley of opportunity? Mm -hmm. So um, I started of our uh, business when I left a large company um, in the first recession. I always seem to start businesses in the recession. That's the best time. <laughs> we used to always want to start a bar. We'd say, we could just go buy a Vax. You know, remember those days? Yes. <laughs> and, I'm a little uh, older, so I mean, but the trigger, don't remember the Vax. The trigger then, <laughs> great question, was the large companies, uh, we hit the recession, and the large companies said, we can't touch all these customers anymore. We're getting 80% you know, of our revenue from 20% of our customers. We need the channel to cover the rest. And I thought, oh, great opportunity. And yet the, the customers, especially the ones that weren't given that opportunity to have that high touch, they, um, you know, they wanted that type of support that they were getting from the larger companies. Similarly, I think the trigger, and I don't mean to be repetitive, is this whole movement to cloud. The more successful IT organizations will be cloud service brokers. They want someone else to assemble the components. That's, that's not their line of business anymore, if they're going to be successful. Because the expectation around service delivery has at least gone up two, three orders of magnitude. That the business is expecting them to deliver services very quickly and to select from public and private and maybe even change it over time. And that is ripe for a channel partner to come in on. So, so just drill down a little bit, because I, you know, I, I totally agree with you, by the way. I see it from SMB all the way up to the large enterprises and service providers. Um, what is, what area within those markets, SMB up to the large enterprise, do you see is the most, um, lowest hanging fruit, if you will? Um, I mean, I've talked to a friend the other day who's got a small business and growing business, and his big thing was, they got the pano cubes out there for their desktop, and he's running Outlook. And he's like, he's got to buy more servers, he's hosting it on site, so little things like that. Right. And that's just a different example, but you know, where is there, was there obviously legacy problems that you can say that's a problem that someone can go after? Well, I, I am biased, but, I, but being new to Citrix, I made this move to this, uh, to this company because of the market opportunity that I saw and partnering with them at another large company. Um, I believe it's desktop virtualization, and I, again, we said that whole transformation that's happening. I, every, every company to open their doors, every business, every educational institution, healthcare institution, has to address the issue of mobility in the workforce, the multiple devices, and the increased need for security. And that is all what desktop virtualization is all about. But there that goes hand in hand with the cloud, though. You can't, you can't have virtualization to desktop without a back-end cloud of some sort or a Correct. robust infrastructure. You have to have some sort of centralized management around that or you would never be able to achieve the goals that you would have in serving the need of, of the end users. So the technology is there right now. I think that's a great opportunity. The end user need is there in, in spades. They want to move even faster. I mean, how many devices do we all have and come to the workforce with and want to access our desktop and our data and applications. So talk about that a little bit further. So to mention, so just talk about it a little further. Talk about the customer needs first, and then talk about um, where you think the market is relative to how many people, what, what level of the market has moved over to this new environment. Is it still small fractions still um, adopted? Is it bigger adoption? Where is that point where 
Uh, the, um, I, I think there's still tremendous growth um, is probably the best way to say it. Um, if you, you know, there's stats out there and people will argue over stats, but there's still tremendous growth in this market. And it's more about the business drivers um, that will have people go to this um, type of technology that are increasing even more so. I, especially, I, I love the electronic health records because it touches everyone in, in every line of work and business. And um, as we all see our doctors with that capability now, we're going to expect that in, in every environment. Okay, Cynthia Gallant, uh, Vice President of Channel Strategy and Development at Citrix. Um, Thank you for coming on theCUBE. Great perspective, great background. Congratulations on the new role and market opportunity yeah, at Citrix. Luck. Thank you. And thanks for coming to theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest. A quick break, we'll be right back. Thanks. I was born not too far from Quebec City. I like to challenge myself physically. I like to challenge myself mentally. Uh, I think I need these challenges um, to, to me they're a vehicle. They're a vehicle that I can use to discover uh, a, a great part of myself. Um, things about myself that I didn't even know were there. Uh, what I've learned in the years that I've been doing this is that there's, there's literally, literally nothing that I can do. The mountain decides uh, what happens. Um, because you don't reach a summit doesn't mean that you don't reach those, those personal goals. Uh, it doesn't mean that you don't grow. Uh, sometimes you learn way more <laughs> Uh, through those little defeats. And if you don't lose sight of, of the, the ultimate goal, uh, then those, those defeats, they're just little battles that you lose. And you always have a chance to, to regroup and then come back stronger. Sometimes not achieving a goal uh, is, is the difference between life or death. You need to have absolute trust um, in the equipment you have to trust the environment, the mountain decides um, if you're going to get up there. Uh, you have to trust yourself that you're going to be able to accept that, that decision that the mountain takes for you sometimes. So I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was 22 years old, so quite a late onset. And, and what that means is that my pancreas doesn't produce uh, insulin anymore, so I have to inject. Uh, that insulin myself when I was diagnosed um, for the first few hours I felt defeated I felt that the the condition would hold me back I felt that I couldn't travel that I couldn't do the things that I love to do you have to make that decision that you will accept the disease and make something great uh, with it there's only one difference between my condition and the mountain uh, they're both obstacles, but the only difference is that there's one that I chose and there's one that I didn't choose. I chose to climb because I believed I would grow, I would learn from it, I would, you know, become hopefully a better person. Even the obstacles that you don't choose can have that same um, positive impact on your life. That achievement also has that effect to uh, often inspire other people and, and to me that is the most the single most rewarding thing in 2008 after five years of preparation after a two months climb I was privileged enough to reach the summit of Mount Everest and it was an incredible feeling um, it was a, a great sense of accomplishment and also as a type 1 diabetic, uh, the message that I knew it would send to millions of, of, of people living with that disease uh, around the world that anything is possible. To me, that was even more important this, that, than the summit. My goal was to climb um, the tallest mountain on the planet. And as soon as I took one step above base camp, 
I was realizing that that goal, when re you reach the top, that's only halfway. Here you come down. So um, sharing the story, uh, sharing the things that I've learned, uh, taking those things back to my personal life, to my professional life. To me, it's all part of the journey and I look forward to the rest of it.